Boker Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very serious news coming out of Syria. Uh, in fact, being reported by the Russian Insider. Exclusive photographs show the Russian Air Force supporting the Syrian army on Al Tanf front. That's the very place where uh, the United States, uh, their allies the other day, had taken and bombed the Syrian uh, pro-Syrian forces, uh, stopping their advance toward the U.S., British, Jordanian and now Norwegian forces that are inside of Syria, according to uh, U.S. reports that were coming on that. Now we're finding out that uh, not only is the Syrian army involved uh, in trying to push back against the U.S. forces near, or at least holding that position there, so that there is not an advance of U.S., British, uh, Norwegian forces in the area towards Damascus. Now we're seeing, according to Russian Insider, that uh, the Russian Air Force has also been involved as well as more Russian equipment. Now that's kind of contrary to what uh, Russia has stated before, that they are trying to stay out of this uh, battle with the United States and Syria, but it does appear that they are getting some help from them. Uh, we, we've also uh, wanted to share with you Rupley's uh, video here, also showing the movement of uh, military equipment. Of course, this is the older equipment there being used by the Syrian government and the pro-Syrian forces there. But Russian Insider has also brought out a, num a number of photographs that we'll share with you here uh, that uh, clearly has, they're, they're watching and, and preparing for uh, an a possible an assault by a coalition forces there that may push towards Damascus. So the Syrian and pro-Syrian forces there are very closely monitoring the movement of uh, U.S. coalition forces in the region there. And let me just share with you real quick here what we're talking about when we're looking at this on a map here. al Tanaf is, as you can see, it's right here, pictured here on the map here. This is the uh, cross point from Iraq where the Norwegian special forces entered just uh, the other day that we reported on. It's this area here that pro-British uh, and U.S. forces and Jordanian and Free Syrian Army forces have been training and also have crossed in over in this area too. Again, as I said, that's a beeline straight towards Damascus. So it looks like that uh, Syria knows that Damascus is going to be targeted in that direction, so they're getting ready for that battle. Now, according to the Russian insider, it says that the, uh, the, initially it was believed that the Russians rejected a role in the renewed push uh, around Al-Tanaf, uh, Al but uh, we now have reason to believe that they may be present after all. We have been sent uh, image documenting the Syrian advance, which show some very modern Russian weapons taking part. First, there are photos of the Russian MI-35. Pardon that for just a second there. Uh, the Russian MI-35 attack helicopter, while Syria operates the almost identical MI-24 helicopters. The distinct non-retractable landing gear suggests this is indeed a newer MI-35, which you can see pictured here on your screen uh, to get a side view of that as well. There is the uh, Russian MI-35. Let me see if I can blow that up just a little bit because I know it's a little bit smaller on the screen and behind you there. Uh, so we'll kind of blow that up and then move this in here so you can see this here on your screen there. That is definitely a Russian, modern Russian MI-35 uh, helicopter uh, in the area there uh, along with the Syrian army. Uh, moving on as well, uh, in the article it states here that, uh, um, that they also have the, the uh, advanced... Uh, uh, very modern artillery system, the TOS-1 multiple ther uh, thermobaric rocket launcher and the MSTAB 152 millimeter howitzer. These are both weapons which Syria did not possess before the start of the Russian military intervention there. Uh, these systems would be crewed by Russian trained Syrian soldiers or it is rumored by Russian crews outright. Perhaps the most Likely possibility is that they are manned by Syrian crews, but with Russian advisors or two continuing tag along to help troubleshoot unforeseen problems. So, friends, this is getting to the point of now of a direct engagement between the United States and Russia, and this is something that is not being brought out to the public whatsoever. Also, they, they mention here the wide variety of uniforms, the army and the militia both together, that being the Syrian army uh, and the militia. Uh, also with uh, possibly Russian forces among them. 
Uh, they have multiple photographs here of this region here, where this is going on at. Uh, the, the, they also show some of the, like in this case here, the ISIS member up on top of the mountain there, targeting them with the uh, HG-8 ATGM, uh, uh, like, a, like a rocket launcher type system there, uh, tanks, etc., all here out here in the desert. Uh, very clear that from what the Russian insider believes is that the Russian uh, military is working alongside with the Syrian military there uh, right against where U.S. Uh, coalition forces are inside of Syria near Al-Tanaf. I get that. That's a tongue twister right there. Uh, anyway, so moving on into other news real quick. Wanted to share something with you I thought was very interesting as we're going back to President Trump's visit there to the Middle East. If you remember, Ivanka and Milana, uh, Milena Trump go without headscarves in Saudi Arabia in their visit. Now, this was interesting because President Trump had kind of uh, uh, lamb blasted President Obama when his wife uh, had insulted the Saudi royal family by not wearing a headscarf when she went there. Uh, and he had reminded Milena, his wife, there about this, but uh, she didn't care. Well, kudos to her. Hats off to her. I'm, I'm really proud of her for not wearing a headscarf there because you know what? You don't have to cover up a woman like that. There's no need in it. That's just kind of ridiculous. But anyway, uh, so they didn't do it there. But here's what really got my attention, though. We know that President Trump is where this morning? He is with none other than Pope Francis. The latest Trump meets with Pope for the first time. Now watch what the article states, though. The latest on President Donald Trump's first visit abroad all times local, 8.31 a.m. this morning in Rome, which same time as what we have here in Prague. President Donald Trump is meeting Pope Francis for the first time. Trump greeting Francis in Salal del Torrento, the room of the little throne on the second floor of the Apostolic Palace Wednesday morning. The men shook hands and Trump could be heard saying it was a very great honor to be there. They, uh, they then posted for photographs and took a seat at, po at the Pope's desk, continuing their conversation. They will now meet in private. Uh, I'd like to know what they're going to be speaking about in private. I'm sure the Pope will let him know what nations need to be taken down. Anyway, prior to the handshake, Trump walked toward St. Ambrose's room, led by a gentleman of His Holiness, which is a sort of honor guard of nobility. He was joined by his wife, Melania Trump, who had a veil on her head in adherence to Vatican protocol. I wonder if we got a picture of that anywhere. Boy, I'd love to have a picture of that right now. Uh, you know, what's just what blows me away about this is that it just lets you know uh, who... Uh, who actually uh, is the one that rules the world. You know, he goes to Saudi Arabia and there's no veiling of his wife's head there, right? No veiling at all. But he goes there to, to, to the Pope of Rome and you can count on one thing, uh, he's going to obey whatever the Pope has to say. And that's the other thing. Of course, he's sitting at the table there now. The, uh, the, there's more articles coming out. The New York Times. I was just hoping to maybe catch a picture of Milana with the black head scarf on there. Uh, maybe she didn't want her picture taken. She didn't want to be embarrassed with what they're what they're making her do. But that's one place she wasn't getting a, uh, getting away with it. Although there is a big issue right now about President Barack Obama, him being there in Italy as well right now, and, and his wife. Uh, not adhering to the dress code, bared shoulders going inside of the St. Uh, Peter's Basilica. Uh, that was kind of funny there, but I can guarantee you one thing, though, she also went veiled before the Pope. That lets you know who rules the world at this present time. It's none other than the Pope of Rome. Uh, getting back, uh, uh, one other issue here too. Trump discusses Madman Kim and Good Guy Xi, an elite uh, call with the Philippines uh, President uh, Duterte. That was an interesting phone call there. He is calling Kim Jong-un a madman, and the Philippines president agrees with him. The only thing is, is the Philippines president does say in this particular article that, that President Xi, the Chinese president, is the ace when it comes to dealing with North Korea. And he says that we do, we all do have a, a, a very serious concern because of a madman having nuclear weapons like he does 
and, and uh, with a button at his fingertips there, but he did uh, let President Trump know that we need to really consider the fact that President Xi is the one man that can actually stop this, uh, this, this problem with Kim Jong-un. Then President Trump also reasserted in this phone conversation here that he had 20 times more firepower there uh, around North Korea. And although he does not want to do it, but he does have the capability to take him out if necessary. Uh, at one point he states that uh, it's, it's very probable that there will be a war. And then he continues on saying in the uh, re transcripts of the re uh, leaked phone call there that he doesn't want to have to do it. I think that phone call was leaked intentionally, if you ask me. Anyway, uh, I don't like normally going by CNN, but anyway, CNN's reporting a, uh, of course, it started on Saturday, a landslide that ended up covering up a major highway there uh, in California there on the coastline there. It's, uh, what highway was that anyway? That's uh, very interesting photos there of this. Uh, Pacific Highway in California covered by a massive landslide in, in Monterey County. Uh, I've actually been on that highway before because I used to live in California back when I was much younger. Uh, anyway, very, very fascinating to see just how massive of a landslide this was. Supposedly there was no fatalities because it had began slowly and they were able to, uh, uh, to monitor it. They were using heavy equipment to try to remove the debris from the roads there. Uh, and then it finally got out of hand and they pulled the equipment out and it just come all tumbling down. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. That is the latest things that are breaking, going on uh, in the world today, this morning, at least some of the headlines that we'd like to try to cover to bring you up to speed on things that are going on. Again, it uh, appears that Russia is definitely involved uh, with uh, the Syrian military there to try to keep uh, the U.S. coalition forces at bay. And it may be, too, that the, that the Russian forces are there to monitor what's going to happen with U.S. forces so that they know how to better prepare for such, uh, uh, such actions that could uh, transpire. And as well, as we reported as well about President Trump there, his meeting there uh, with the Pope of Rome this morning, and Ivanka Trump definitely is veiled when it comes to the Pope, but doesn't do it for the Saudis let you know where the leadership of the world is. I'm sure right now President Trump is getting all the information that he is supposed to get. Uh, remember at the inaugural dinner, he was told then what he must do in order to fix the problem with Pope Francis. And I'm sure you're gonna find that out when he comes out of this meeting, that it was a good meeting, a productive meeting, and that he's a great guy after all. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.